Hello and a warm welcome to Hill Marie. We are so grateful that you're going to be joining us in the fall. My name is Lisa Valentine. I'm the middle school counselor here at Hill Marie. I work with grades six, seven, and eight, and I'm in my 21st year here. In the time together that we have, I will be showing you some slides and we'll be covering required classes for various grade levels, the elective options available to our middle school students, and we do have a nice variety what the course selection process is and what the next steps that you need to take as a family. We'll talk about math placement, talk a little bit about our um, typical schedule when we have typical times, which we are not in now. If you can see behind me, the word is perseverance. We are all persevering through this interesting pandemic time that we are in. But again, we'll try to get uh, general information out to you about the course selection process. If you have any questions or concerns, my contact information will be on the last slide, and I welcome a call or an email from you. And so we will proceed with that. Uh, just a little bit more about me, uh, besides being in my 21st year at Hill Murray and thinking this is a wonderful place to, to work and to be, uh, and besides spending time with my family and friends, two of my favorite things are running and writing. So there's a little bit about me, and I look forward to getting to know each of you. So let us go ahead and proceed with uh, the information at hand. Thank you. Here we go with a few slides that will get some of the basics covered for the course selection process, hopefully answer your questions, and provide contact information for further questions that you may have. If you have the form available to you, you may want to have it in front of you. And um, I will also show some of these on, on the slides that are upcoming. But if you do have it in front of you, that could be helpful. Make sure you put your son or daughter's name at the top of the first page. There's also some contact information to fill out on the back page. Make sure you have the correct form uh, for your child's grade level. And then each of them will also mention um, who to send it to and uh, the target date of Monday, March 1st. Uh, it will go to Jen O'Gary in our admissions department, and you can either scan and email them to her or drop them in the mail by Monday, March 1st. So our goals with these next few slides will be to review required courses, look at our nice variety of elective options. I've already mentioned the timeline and uh, again contact information following if you have any questions. I, I welcome emails and phone calls and we'll talk a little bit about the placement exam process for math as well. want to let you know that the middle school curriculum guide can be found on our website as well as the high school curriculum guide. If you go to our main page, Academics, Curriculum, and then you'll see this page, uh, click on Middle School Curriculum Guide. It'll list all the required classes by grade level. It'll have all the elective options, give you course descriptions for all of our classes, and some other good general information. Required classes, I'll show you on the next three slides, 6th, uh, 7th, and 8th grade. They're really similar uh, because all of our students in middle school take a required math, science, English, and social studies class for a full year. And they each also take a semester of theology and a semester of phi ed. So five of their um, seven periods are full with the required classes. They're a little different from grade level to grade level. For example, uh, sixth graders learn about Minnesota history and social studies. And in seventh and eighth grade, they turn their focus to US history. In science, it's science and engineering in sixth grade, life science in seventh grade, and Earth and Space Science in 8th grade. So there are some differences like that, but those are the required classes. So that leaves two periods, and as you'll see, this is the 6th grade, 7th grade, and you see those minor differences there, 8th grade. But in each of these, you see two open spots, so that means they have two periods where they can take electives. They're not actually at the end of the day, they're in the middle of the day, but there's two periods available to them to make some elective choices and we do have a nice variety so let's talk about that a little bit because it's two periods they can either take two full year courses four semester courses or one full year and two semester classes if a student is taking a full year uh, they need to mark both a and b on the course selection sheet you'll see that uh, i'll talk a little bit about world language only our eighth graders can take spanish or french it is a high school level class they uh, typically take it with just other eighth graders, but it is a high school level class, so the rigor is more than it would be for our other electives. And a couple of things to consider if you're thinking about taking a world language, 
other than the fact that it is a high school level class. Um, we don't have a world language requirement. We recommend at least two years. If a student is interested, they can take five years of a language here, so they could start in eighth grade. If a student is just looking at taking a couple of years, they may want to wait till they're further down the road in high school because they may also um, need to show some proficiency if they're going on to post-secondary education, uh, show some proficiency in a world language, um, and they would want that to be closer to, to that time. So a couple of things to consider there. Most of our electives cannot be repeated, but band, choir, orchestra, and learning resource offerings are the exceptions. And um, as we complete your schedule, you know, once things are set in the summer, first semester is set, but once students are here, there are sometimes opportunities to take a look at their second semester elective options, and uh, sometimes there's some availability to make some changes, but they'll hear about that later in the first semester. Another important part of the course selection is choosing alternates. Uh, you'll see on the sheet that you'll put an X or a check mark on first choices in the little box next to the course listed. Um, and then in the middle of the back page, uh, putting three electives, excuse me, three alternate electives uh, beyond their first choices in case that we need those. And, and do rank them in order of preference, with one being your top alternate. Because what will sometimes happen is we do our best to give everyone their first choices, but it's not always going to happen that way. Uh, sometimes two choices might be the same period and you can't take two classes at the same time. Sometimes classes fill up and eighth graders uh, and seventh graders get spots before sixth graders do. Get a little bit of a priority to the upperclassmen. Same thing would happen at the high school level. Sometimes a class is not run because there's not an, enough students who showed interest in it that year. So there's a variety of reasons why, why there may be, we may not be able to complete uh, your child's schedule with their first choices. So do pick those alternates carefully. If at any point the information you provide on your sheet doesn't help us complete your child's schedule, um, then you're going to hear from me. And that will be over the summer. We'll talk about what the conflict is and we'll talk about what options are available and, and take it from there. So... Here's a look at the sheet and some of the electives. This is an eighth grader sheet, so there are some, some, again, some subtle differences between the grade levels. But you'll see our variety of art, business, English, music classes, phi ed, science, and social studies on this first page. A couple of things to note. With the music choices, and you'll see here's an example of if you want to take it for a full year, do mark A and B, A being first semester, B being second semester. If you're interested in, in trying a variety of electives and want to just take one of these for a semester, you can do that. If you know what instrument you want to play, uh, there's a line provided for you to, to let us know that. Uh, they do welcome newcomers. So if you want to try a music option and you're not sure what you'd like to do or what instrument you might want to try, that's a good time to reach out to Miss Young's, uh, our band director, and um, Mr. Villasvec, our orchestra director, and talk about what some of your options might be. Uh, do know that there is a movement and wellness class for sixth graders as well. We don't put sixth and eighth graders in the same phi ed class. And on this sheet, you'll see me, myself, and my brain. You won't see that on the sixth grade sheet because it's only available to seventh and eighth graders. So there are a, a few differences. This is the second page, uh, technology and engineering, theater, the Nicholas Center, world languages uh, round out our elective options. You'll see there's a prerequisite. Um, STEM 2 is one of our newer electives, but obviously STEM 1 is needed uh, first, and then you can take STEM 2. And um, middle school study skills is now a class that a student can take for a semester or a year, and that is available to all of our students. I'll tell you a little bit more about learning resource classes in the Nicholas Center on a later slide. And again, this is an eighth grader sheet, so you'll see that they can take uh, French or Spanish as a world language. Any of our students in grades six through eight can take the 0604 Exploring World Languages, and they get a taste of Spanish and French, our two world language offerings, and also a couple other languages like um, Chinese and Arabic. So it's a, it's a bit of a world cultures class. Here's that... Uh, area of the sheet that you fill out with those alternate choices. So again, please be careful to pick those um, in order of preference and don't list the ones that you've already picked as your first choices. These need to be different 
because we need them if your first choices don't work out. And uh, don't worry about the signature part because you won't need those as new students coming in. So there's a little bit about our elective options. Now about math uh, and how the placement process works. These are the typical math progression for middle school students. And typically sixth graders take pre-algebra, seventh graders, excuse me, sixth graders take pre-algebraic concepts, seventh graders take pre-algebra, and eighth graders take middle school algebra. Uh, but we do have students who advance uh, from each grade level and maybe um, a level or two ahead of the typical placement. And before we talk about that, here's just a, a review of the high school level classes. And, you know, for example, we have eighth graders in honors geometry. So, um, and we have seventh graders in algebra, sixth graders in pre-algebra. Pre here's a round out of the rest of our math offerings. So students will not run out of math options at Hill Murray. And the placement process we place students in the typical grade level math class. If you believe that your son or daughter qualifies for advanced placement, we're going to get some indication of that on the teacher recommendation form from their current teacher. And then you're also going to want to have them take the placement test. And that information will come out later this spring, probably in late April. It'll come from the admissions department. This year, because of COVID, it will be an online placement exam, but the procedure will be shared out with you. And the test is assessing skills and conceptual knowledge in algebra. So that helps us determine what is the appropriate placement for your son or daughter. So only those who are interested in testing to a higher level need to take the placement exam. Look for that information later this spring. TNC support classes, Nicholas Center support classes include strategic study lab, Reading Enrichment, Wilson Reading, and then also Strategic Tutor and Wilson Tutor. These classes uh, require a diagnosed learning need for placement. Um, and Strategic Tutor and Wilson Tutor, you'll see there is an additional fee charge for these classes because they're one-on-one. -on -one. These are electives, so they are within a middle school student's um, typical school day during that fourth and fifth period. Uh, but do know there's an additional fee for some of these classes that are one-on-one -on -one tutors. If you have any questions, contact Mr. Brent Johnson. His contact information follows. Stay tuned uh, later this spring. You may also hear about our summer offerings. Uh, those, um, again, have changed some because of the pandemic, but there will be some offerings. Uh, one of them is called Summer Fuel. It's a good, a good option for incoming students to our middle school, and it is an online, uh, it's primarily an online uh, summer course. So there will be more information coming out about that and other summer offerings. I will mention just briefly our typical school schedule, although that is not what we are using this year because of the pandemic. But typically, um, I mean, our start and finish time are the same. But typically, um, we have three green days a week and a black and white day. So let's just talk about schedule a little bit. We do start at 7.55 a.m. and dismiss at 2.29. In typical times, our middle school students eat entirely separately from their from the high school students. They have the cafeteria and commons to themselves. Uh, this year we're eating in classrooms, but in typical times, middle schoolers have their own time and space for eating lunch. And as I said, in a, in a typical week, there's two uh, black days with wind time. Those are black and white days, and then there are three green days. In a typical schedule, on the days that they uh, on green days before they go to lunch, they have home base, and um, we also have advisory periods where they're learning um, lessons that are developed uh, for the whole child, social emotional learning, and other other topics, uh, and those are developed by the guidance and counseling uh, department. So the middle school courses, the middle school advisories are are um, ones that I provide. Encourage students to try new things because in our electives are a great place to do that. And we also provide some built-in support time for all of our students on those black and white days. It's called WIN, What I Need. Um, students go through their black schedule and then they have time to sign up with teachers. It might be to make up a test because they were out sick. It might be a review session for a test. It might be to work on a group project um, outside of class time. 
you know, things like that. So wind time is something that our students really like, and uh, we have more of those this year, but in typical times, we have them twice a week. So these next three slides just show our usual schedule, and uh, it's different this year because of the pandemic, but this is what our typical schedule looks like, and uh, stay tuned on what the fall will look like. Here are contact information. Here is contact information for the various departments that you may have questions of. And here is my contact information. And again, I welcome phone calls, email, happy to answer questions for you. And also just to talk about what the Hill Mary Middle School experience is like. It's a great place and we look forward to having you join us. Thank you.